Good day, good people. It's your guy, Lewis to the T. I'm here with your ninth installment of Black History Month 2021. Today is Tuesday, February 9th, and I am excited to talk to you guys about two of the most prolific names in African American history, in history in general, but particularly in African American history. And those two men are the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X. I am excited to talk about them because these are two men um, that typically people like to compare and contrast and try to figure out um, how different they were. We really like to talk about whether it's the books that were written about them, the movie that was made about them. I think there was even a limited TV series that was made in regard to Malcolm and Martin. And we oftentimes want to kind of pit their philosophies against each other. But today I really want to explore more of what made them similar and the things that they faced during the time period in which they came to um, really present leadership um, and present this message of unity amongst African American people. In the 1960s, both Malcolm and Martin were significant figures in the African American community, um, very obviously one being a Muslim and one being a Christian, um, kind of led them down separate paths as far as their faith, but that faith rolled over into um, who they were socially. So as we all know, or if you may not know, you need to do a little bit of research. Um, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was a Baptist minister in the Christian faith. Malcolm X was a minister uh, within the Nation of Islam and the Muslim faith. And both of them found it absolutely necessary um, to rise to leadership within the African-American community and on behalf of African-American people. And it's really important um, to say on behalf of African-American people. I think being black in America and having some level of platform, you're instantly called a leader. Um, and you may have some leadership qualities or skills. You may have um, the face that people are familiar with in regard to a community of people, but working on behalf of is what these two men had in common. It was their goal to present positivity um, and the value added asset that was African-American men, women, and children. Um, they went out with positive messages, um, unifying messages about who we were as a people. And as a result, many things changed because of them. Um, it wasn't just the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. who uh, marched for freedom and who fought for us to be in a better place in this world, but there were also people like Malcolm X who in, his, in a different way uh, fought for us. He fought for us in the words that he used and in the interviews that he gave. He fought for us in his willingness to speak truth to power and his ability to speak in you know private rooms and in public sectors about the value of who we were um, as a people, our strength and our power if we were to ever unify and come together. So uh, for me, they really carry the same amount of weight. I don't choose one over the other. I began to learn about um, Dr. King much earlier because I think he was a much more uh, palatable subject to talk about in academics, right? So in school systems and within classrooms, it was easy to talk about a person who believed in nonviolence, to talk about a person who was very obviously Christian and with Christian um, being the more acceptable religion within our country, I think it was easy to talk about him um, and to cast this kind of glowing light um, above him that he just wanted peace and he wanted unity and those were things that he wanted but as I got older and did my own research and listened to his words for myself read his speeches for myself I realized that while he uh, definitely practiced non-violence he was not a person who was passive he was not a person who sat back and waited for something to happen. He was very vocal. He was loud. He was known for his oratorical skill and for um, his ability to draw a crowd and to get people to listen to him and to really have uh, something to say. It was later on in life that I discovered Malcolm X. I remember being given his book to read. Um, you know, many years ago when I was in my teenage years, I didn't necessarily read it. I think I started to put it down. Um, but when I was in college, I remember sitting and reading this book and not being able to put it down. Learning about somebody who I kind of heard about, normally in comparison to Dr. King, um, or heard about when people were angry about something, 
um, and they wanted to quote him, uh, you know, in his, his famous quote, uh, by any means necessary, and oftentimes it was taken <laughs> completely out of context. Um, but learning about him on my own and what I realized when I look back on my understanding of Dr. King and when I look back on what I read about Malcolm X and later on being able to utilize places like YouTube to look at interviews and listen to them in their own words, these men were very much alike. They endured the criticism externally and internally. We were able to elevate them as these celebrated awesome figures after their deaths. But while they were alive, they both endured times where they were viciously hated by people outside of the race and people within the race. I was listening to uh, Dr. Jeremiah Wright, Reverend Wright out of Chicago, Illinois one time, and this was many years ago, probably 15 to 20 years ago, and he was talking about how Dr. King was not celebrated throughout his life. Um, that he had moments where people embraced him and loved him, but there were many times that he was rejected by the black community, the black church, and particularly preachers and pastors um, in America. And you would think that that's something um, that wouldn't have happened, that he had this message of peace and love and unity, but he also had a powerful combative message um, of economic uh, equality. He also had a message um, to the government that things were not right. So a lot of people didn't want to be aligned with what they, con they considered to be a troublemaker. In the same sense, Malcolm X, for, you know, he faced the same thing. It was more obvious for him because he was more uh, overtly against the system, wanted to turn it upside down. Um, his, you know, his language at times uh, would be a lot more crass or a lot more direct than Dr. King. And so he was vil uh, vilified outside of the community, somewhat feared within the community amongst certain segments, not everybody, of course. Um, but they both faced... Um, this criticism out uh, externally and internally, but they persisted. Um, I was told one time that discipline and integrity are doing, discipline is doing those things that ought to be done long after the desire to do them has passed. I want to say that again. Discipline is doing those things that ought to be done long after the desire to do them has passed. And integrity is doing those things when nobody is looking as if they were. When I think about these two men, I think about those two words, I think about integrity, I think about discipline, I think about how hard it must have been to fight for people who didn't appreciate you. I think about how hard it must have been to be uh, fighting against people who opposed you simply because you wanted equality and wanted to be viewed as a human being and wanted to be viewed um, as equal. Uh, so when I think about those two African-American men during a time of so much uh, such a tumultuous time, uh, a time of anger and rage. We know how both of them uh, left this world. They, they died um, these horrible deaths by bullets. They died, they were murdered. They didn't just die, they were murdered uh, for their beliefs and for their attempt um, to create equality amongst the races to elevate uh, black people to a status of just being seen as human beings. So today, Tuesday, February 9th, that's your ninth installment. I want you guys to really do some research. Look at who these men were beyond what we're told um, in a very superficial way, um, but really dig deeper. Look at uh, Dr. King, Dr. King's last speech. Look at Malcolm X's last speech. Look at how much closer they came in the way in which they spoke um, and how much more similar they were uh, than different. This is your guy, Lewis to the T. Hope you guys enjoyed this ninth installment. Let's have some discussion about it. Please feel free to drop some comments below, share a like, and show some love amongst your friends and family and pass this along. And I'll see you guys tomorrow.